I believe and trust that today the word of God that is coming your way will be a blessing. Like we always do wherever you are into the face of hearing the word of God. Holy are you Lord hey. all creation cause you Lord worthy your voice and talk to God as God that has his word is about to come to you if there is just only one person that the word of God is sent to bless today let it be you open your glow and talk to God let God let God let God let God, let God descend wherever you are let the presence of the living God permeate your heart make your heart available to the word let the word fall fall on us uh, 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 good soil ah you want to pray that you will not be only the hearer of the word, but you will be motivated and encouraged to be the doer, ah, so that the blessings of the living God shall be your portion today in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory, we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. And so, Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you as never before, asking that your word will come and give us direction. We pray that your word will come and accomplish your set purpose. We pray that your word will come and convict and convert. My heart desire is that today through your word, let impossibilities be possible. Cause us to move from our stagnation onto a higher realm where your name can be praised and glorified. I thank you for your awesome presence that is around wherever each and every person hearing the sound of my voice is. I ask the Lord by your mighty right hand every intention of the enemy that is contrary to your will and your will will put asunder in the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. We hold every contrary agenda bound even as we release your awesome power. I submit wholly and fully unto thee and I ask that you use me to your own glory. In Jesus mighty name I pray and let the church say amen. Oh, put your hands together wherever you are for the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, God has sent me your way with a very short word of God. And you know when I say short, I'm going to preach for 10 hours. Hallelujah. But don't worry. We shall soon be done and gone. Uh, today, God wants me to speak to you about a, a subject that I have titled, 
I don't know, but you can pick your own title, but what I want to call this message is that blessings in adversity or times of adversity. The long and short of it all is that in periods of adversity, in times of difficulty, like we are in plague, uh, 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 we are in COVID-19. The children of God are supposed to prosper. The children of God is supposed to be well with us. You see, church, when you read the word of God, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 10, verse number uh, uh, 5 to 7, uh, the Bible makes us to understand that there is an evil, an evil uh, uh, that I have seen under the sun. Uh, 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 and he goes on to say that it is an arrow that proceeds from the ruler, that proceeds from the devil. And what is this arrow? He says that folly is set in high and great places, places of great dignity, while the, the, the rich uh, 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 sit in a lowly place. And the verse number seven is what I love most. He says, I have seen servants on horses. Why princes walk in the ground like what? Servants. In other words, beloved, you and I that are supposed to be in the highly places, irrespective of the situation and the condition we find ourselves, we are rather at the lowly places whilst those who are not supposed to be there are enjoying and we make excuses and think that, oh, you know, the times are not good. The times are difficult. There is COVID-19 and, and it is not normal. I am here to let you know that the word of God says in times of adversity, in times of a plague, in times of difficulties, in times when the conditions are not normal, that are the periods or those are the times that God blesses his own children. When you read the word of God in Hosea chapter 4 verse number 6, the Bible is saying that it is it is not prayer. It is not desiring. It is not thinking that will what cause us to be where we are. It is when we lack knowledge. For it declares for lack of knowledge, my people perish. And because beloved, what you know is what can make you what you have to become. In other words, if you don't know something, it is difficult for you to become that something. And so the prerequisite of achievement is to know what you want to achieve. If you don't know the word of God that speaks about the situation and the condition you are in. You will be stuck in that area because you need to know in order for the word to give you the power to come out and most of us what we know is that when times are hard when times are difficult ah, we can't do anything because we are bound. I am here to let you know the opposite is true for whoever calls himself the child of God you don't depend on the seasons and the times that are physically around. You depend on God and his word. And I am here to let you know that the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter number 19 verse 15, there is a profound statement there that I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want you to know. Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse number 15. Let me read the word of God. The Bible says, by the testimony of two, a case shall be what? Established. He says, one witness shall not rise against a man concerning iniquity or any sin that he commits. By the mouth, this is where I want, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. You see, and when you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 1, 
it is equally stated there that by the testimony of two, a case is what? Established. In other words, for something to be what? True. For something to hold, when it is established or confirmed by another, it means it is true. It can hold. I am here to let you know that when God says something and confirms it by another word, then it is true. Then it holds. Then it means it cannot change. And so if by your situation, your condition that you are in, God has spoken and you you, you, you didn't hear because it just was. And he, he repeats it. Then I can just assure you that he means business. And whether you like it or not, it shall come to pass. And today I am here to let you know that the condition we are in, God has spoken his word into it. And if we know that word and we believe in that word and we walk in that word, Beloved, we will be too late to fail. We will prosper when others are what? Retrogressing. We will succeed when others are what? Are failing. And I want each and everyone hearing the sound of my voice to do. Let this word be on the tablet of your heart. Meditate upon it day and night. And begin to implement it. And by the end of this COVID period, you will realize that God's intention is not to what? Belittle you. It's not to set you back. It's not to what? Punish you. Irrespective of what is going on. You are the true candidate that should succeed in everything that you touch. If you can hear me, lift your voice and shout, I hear you. You see, in the word of God, certain things took place. And I want us to put them together. And then you understand where I am coming from. That in days of adversity, the children of God should prosper. In days of difficulties, you and I should sail through. Now, let's quickly open our Bibles to Exodus chapter number uh, 1. Let's go to Exodus chapter 1. Uh, and the Bible is talking about the people of Israel. And he begins uh, by saying that, Lord, you, 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 you recall that Joseph had become what? A prime minister in the land of Egypt as a result of the interpretation of the dream of Pharaoh concerning the farming that was supposed to take place for seven years that he managed resources. So Joseph has become somebody well revered in the land. And then as a result of what Joseph did, the whole of Israel had gone to be in the land of Egypt. They were settled in the land of Goshen. And then the Bible Bible is saying that there came another king who did not recognize or remember what Joseph had done. And so he looked around and then he realized that these people from Israel were prospering. Are you understanding me? At times I ask myself, didn't the king have uh, advices? Didn't the king have history written down? But the point is that he chose not to remember. But rather he saw that they were prospering. They were numerous. And so he called counsel and he he said, we need to deal with them shrewdly. We need to set them to task. We need to bring them down. Otherwise, one day, they will just overthrow us and possess the land. And so the Bible says, he set, set tax masters over them. But when you read verse number 12, that is where I like most. The Bible says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they what multiplied. In other words, the situation became unbearable. They were tasked to do things that they hitherto were not doing. But the Bible declares that the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. I don't know the problem that you are going through because of the calamity that has befallen all the world. But I am here to let you know that if you can get the key, the more covenant 19 comes, the more you will stay strong, the more you will prosper, the more it shall be well because God's word is superimposed on the word of this world. God's word is eternal. God's word is the truth. Lift your voice and let me know you hear me. You see, he says, the more they afflicted them, the more they prospered. 
I don't know what you are going through. I don't know who is the taskmaster. I don't know what conditions you are flowing through right now. That makes you to think. That mountain grace style. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel some liberty here. I feel some liberty here. And beloved, the way, the word of God is, if you understand it, you don't worry about certain things. And so when you go to uh, uh, chapter number uh, eight of the same book of Exodus, we, we, we are trying to establish a case here. I'm trying to establish that by the testimony of two, because the word is being confirmed, it can be a sure word that you and I can walk through and know that of the truth, it shall come to pass. The Bible says that God has sent Moses uh, to the land of Egypt to deliver uh, the people of Israel from the servitude that they were going through under Pharaoh. And then when he went, when he went, when he went, what I read from the word of God amazed me. In chapter 8, verse number 20 going, what is the word of God saying? The word of God is saying that uh, 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 Moses had gone to the king demanding that the people will go. And so he said, And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, That says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me, or else I will not let, uh, or else if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants in your people into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of what? Swarms of lies and also the ground which they stand. But the verse 22 is what I want you to note. He said that, and in that day, I will set apart in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen. I am talking to you about the land that the descendants of Joseph, that the descendants, the people of God from Israel were settled. I, 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 I am saying that God said, there is going to be a calamity. There is going to be a punishment. There is going to be a plague. But I am decreeing that there is a unique people who are not going to experience the effects of this. He made this proclamation. He said, the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of lies shall be there in order that you may know that I am the Lord, the the, 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 the what? The most, I am the Lord in the midst of who? The land. God is trying to make a statement here. God is trying to say that when there is a plague, when there is a calamity, when situations get tough, he has eternally decreed that those who believe in him, those who believe his word, those who are his children, no calamity shall befall them. The question is, are you a child of God? Do you believe in God? Do you know the God that I'm talking to you about? And as if God was lying, my brother, my sister, it came to pass exactly as God had what? Decreed. And when you go to the next chapter, I think chapter 9, verse number 22, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven, and there may, may, may be hail in all the land of Egypt. The Lord was instructing, because whenever the plague comes, and then the, the, the king will sort of uh, ask for a God to be lenient. It's lifted. He will harden his heart. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is this, that in the midst of those calamities, in the midst of those problems, in the midst of those pandemic that we call it now a days, the people of Israel were not what? They were not affected. And so today you are a child of God. You will not be affected. When you jump to the verse 20, it says, and you read, it says, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Are you understanding me? You are divinely protected. But the devil will want you to believe otherwise. And it creates doubts in you. 
And as a result of that doubt, you are impacted negatively by the negative conditions you find yourself in. But if you know the truth, and the truth which says that a child of God shall not succumb to any plague because he is divinely protected, it will energize you. It will set you up to pray and claim that promise so that at the end of it all, you will see that your God is God. You see, the Bible says that when Pharaoh realized that uh, the, 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 the Israelites were multiplying, were multiplying, he, he, he instructed that uh, they should be what? Destroyed. The fair male born were to be what? Destroyed. But yet, beloved, the Bible says the more they tried, the more God opened a way. Make sure that there will be midwives who are what? God-fearing and will not implement. Listen to me, child of God. I, I am just trying to build a case for you to understand that in every difficult situation, God has already made provision for they that believe and trust in him so that they will not be negatively impacted even if there be anything, they will rather be what? Successful. They will rather be mightier. They will rather increase. So whoever you are, wherever you are, let this one sink deeply into your spirit. And you may think I am lying. Let us go to Genesis chapter 26. And this is where I want you to pay attention to. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 26, talking about Isaac, the Bible says that, there was farming in the land besides the first farming that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Food, it becomes difficult for you and I. We can starve to death. When there is farming, there is no abundance of food. It becomes difficult for everybody. And so the man of God realized that in Egypt there was food. And he realized that his father, when there was famine, went to Egypt. And so he had wanted to do. But I am here to let you know, the fact that somebody has done something does not mean if you do it, you will get the same results. You get the same or better results because God has instructed you to do. When you come Commit your ways unto the Lord. Your situation may be unique and different. It is the Lord that will order your steps. It is the Lord that will cause you to take certain steps, certain decisions, uh, and implement them so that the results can come the way you expect it to come. The Bible says that he wanted to follow the footsteps of the Father, but then God came to the scene, and God said, no way, no way, Isaac, this is not this time, the way you have to go, the way you have to go is that stay in the land. The Bible says, God says, stay in the land. Stay in the land. For the farming is an adverse situation. There is an adversity. Yet, I the Lord, because I have said, it shall be well with you. In verse number three, it says, dwell in this land and I will be with you. And number two, bless you. And number three, for to you, and your descendants, I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. What a word. God is saying that, and I don't know whom I'm speaking to. Maybe you intend to give up. Maybe you intend to turn into the world. Maybe there is a decision that you are contemplating that is contrary to the will and the word of God. God will want you to listen to him. It is not you. See, it is not your plan. It is not your calculation. It is not how smart you are. It is because you believe in God. It is because you are surrounded unto God. It is because you have given your heart unto God and you cherish God. The other day when Joshua wanted to succeed, God came in Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. He said, this book of the law, mm, meditate know them read them meditate upon it day and night that you might learn to observe that which is what written in it so that your way shall be prosperous beloved if you want prosperity it is
is not by magic. It is not by anything. It is because you believe in the word that God has said concerning it and you walk in that word. Then you will be too late to fail. I am here to announce to somebody that the situations are difficult. The conditions are not normal. Yet in the midst of this pandemic, if you can dwell in the land that God has given you, in the destiny that God has ushered you into, in the calling that God has placed upon your life, my brother, my sister, it will pass and you will still be standing. It will pass and you will remain blessed. As a matter of fact, there shall be an elevation. There shall be a promotion and people shall look at you and they will ask, what is your key? And you will turn them to the word of God and you will let them know the conditions did not affect your faith. The conditions did not impact your belief. You believed in the word. You believed in what God has said and that is the result and so others shall come to know the Lord. The Bible says the obedience is the key. Most Christians when the going is smooth oh yes praise the Lord hallelujah let adversity come let calamity come then we begin to cut corners we begin to rationalize things and use our carnal minds to devise ways and means that we think will be what? Okay for us. Let me ask you a question. Since this COVID-19, how has your evangelism been? How many people have you spoken to about the word? Oh, okay, okay. You yourself. Can you describe to yourself the relationship between you and your God that you serve? You will realize that the situation has enabled you to make excuses. You will realize that the fellowship you used to have with him is not the same. And yet you are the candidate that is talking to God. Why? The Bible is saying that he believed in the word and therefore he obeyed it. He dwelt in the land that was not okay. The land that was experiencing famine. And beloved, when he dwelt in the land, it, it amazes me. If it were to be you and I, we would say that ah, it is not raining. So what do we do? We will sit down doing nothing. But the Bible is saying that Isaac, that same year, went to the land. And began to do what he knew to do. He was a farmer. It does not matter whether the rain was coming or not. He went and prepared the land. Some of you hearing the sound of my voice. We have forsaken the word of God. We have forsaken the work of God also. We are what hiding behind the situation. And we are doing nothing. Trying to justify the Times are different. I am here to let you know. Times were different from this man. Yet he obeyed the Lord. The Bible said that same year. That same year. That same year. He prepared the land. He sowed. And he what? Harvested a hundredfold. And you will ask me. How did it come? You see. If you can picture that. If you can picture that. You will see that the God you serve is awesome. Every seed that is planted, my brother, my sister needs rain. It needs to be watered. And I didn't realize or never read in the word that uh, every day uh, Isaac will take water and go and water the seeds. No. No. As I was pondering over this, then it occurred to me that in the book of Judges, I think chapter 6, where Gideon had met God and God had instructed him to, to, to go and deliver Israel. And he wanted to test God. What did he do? He said, God, if you are the one really, really, then you know something. I, I put these leaves here. <laughs> let the rain, let the rain fall around it. But let not some of it touch what? The leaf. God did it. God did it. And then he said, okay, okay, God, I, I don't want you to be angry. Okay, this time, let's do the opposite. Let the rain be only on the leaves.
this, but not what? Anywhere around. And God did it. I, I am trying to let you know that the one we serve is God. Have you been traveling, driving your car along the road, and you realize that in an area where you are, it is raining so mightily. It is raining so big. And yet, within one second, you step into another area, and it is as dry as dry. That is what our God can do. So I can imagine when he became obedient and he took the step and he planted God what? An adverse condition and negatively impacts them minus Isaac. What am I trying to tell you? I have adduced at least two or three instances in the way where when there was affliction, the people of God prospered. And I want you to understand that these days that we find ourselves in is no different. Maybe there is a drought in your marriage. Maybe there is a COVID issue in the family. Whatever it is, I am here to announce to you that is not supposed to be your end. If you can believe in God, if you can trust in him, if you can search the Holy Script and know what God says concerning your situation and believe in that uh, and let that word before the throne of grace, God will come through for you. God will bless you. God will cause it to be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. So beloved, the Bible says, Isaac went, he planted in that same season, he reaped a hundredfold. But when he did that, sources came with it, other conditions. And the other conditions, I will leave for another sermon. You see, God is about to bless you. God is about to make it well with you. That is a difference. You see, let me tell you something. When the people of Israel were coming to the promised land, do, do you know what set them apart? When you read the word of God, the Bible says God, in Exodus chapter 3, promised them that I will go ahead of you. And God was with them in the pillar of what? A, a, a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire in the night. And so you realize that on that desert, when everybody is what? Subjected to the elements, the sun was so shining upon everybody. There were no buildings like we have nowadays. They were all similar places, whether they were living in tents or huts or whatever you call them. Every nation was the same. Yet once in a while, the people will be there and they will behold a multitude coming. And that multitude that are coming, you realize that they are under a shade. They are under a shadow. They are covered. And so the elements are not impacting them. That is what God does for his people. When situations are different, when situations are negative, when situations are adverse, he covers his own. Have you forgotten about uh, uh, the word of God? The word of God in the book of Psalm chapter 91, Bible says they that dwell in the secret place of what? Uh, Almighty what? Abide under the shadow of the Lord. Are you understanding me? God, as a blessed child of God and so the fear of them fell on other nations. Because they were different. Because they were unique. Remember, when Pharaoh pursued them, the Bible says that the pillar of fire came, withdrew from the defensive position and came in front of them and gave them light. And that same light became darkness unto the pandemic or unto the plague or unto the enemy that were pursuing them. I am here to let you know, in days like this, if only you can trust in the Lord, if you only you can believe in him, if you only you can walk in him, you won't turn corners, you won't dilute your faith by this worldly wisdom and you will have unflinching faith in God, he will see you through. This is what I am relying on. And this is what I want you to rely on also. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Not because you planned, 
Not because you are educated, not because you skinned, but because you were obedient, but because you believed in the word, but because you walked according to the word. Beloved, it is not always prayer. I never read that Isaac prayed. I never read. But obedience, obedience, obedience. God willing, we will examine the principles that enabled Isaac to prosper to the extent that the Bible says the Philistines envied him. Everybody is crying and you are prospering to the extent that now people are what? Envying you. That shall be your testimony. That shall be your confession. And you know what? They will envy you. They will rise against you. They will do what they ought not to do. But through it all, through it all, God will be with you. He will make a way where there is no... You see, I keep telling people that the solution to every problem is already in existence. It is not now that God is going to find the solution and bring. When God created human beings, he knew that before Adam should come to the scene, there will be a need for food. There will be a need for all those things that had to be there to make the life of man comfortable. And so he began by creating all of them before he created man. Before this pandemic came, he had already decided the solution. So you and I, what we need to do is not to ask him, no, go show us the solution. Because this is there. And when he leaves us, we will know. In periods of adversity, the children of God should be blessed. In periods of adversity, the children of God should prosper. I don't know about you, but I need you to take this word and meditate upon it. Are you prospering? Some of us are so fixated in our checks that do not come in. And we are dejected, demoralized. No. If God looked over you and you didn't die yesterday night, he will take care of you throughout the day. And that is why I need you to be encouraged. And that is why I need you to start doing mind-boggling things. You see, uh, 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 if you have to wait, there is this scripture that, 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 that I like that much. You see, most of us want to wait for what? Uh, 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 opportune times, good times before we do uh, uh, things that we have to do. Amen. But the Bible is saying in, I think, Ecclesiastes chapter um, number 11, verse number 4. Let me see what the word of God says. It says, he who watches the wind waiting for all conditions. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. He who watches the wind, waiting for all conditions to be perfect, will not sow. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap. In other words, if you are waiting for the conditions to be perfect, for COVID-19 to go, for all conditions to fall in place, before you make your move, you will be too late to succeed. What God wants you to do is believe in what he has said concerning you. I don't know what God has spoken to you. Yours may be different. For some of us, God will say do nothing. But for some of us, God will impress upon you. Move. Whatever God has said, don't look around and think times are not right. Believe it. Move and see the hand of God falling upon it. May the Lord bless his word. May you be given the grace to abide in it, walk in it, that you will not be hearers of the word only, but you will be challenged and motivated to arise and do things that no human being would do with this natural wisdom. They will say you are crazy. They will say it is out of order. But insofar as your God has spoken, I decree and declare it shall be well. And in these days of adversity, you shall be blessed. You shall prosper. You shall succeed. If you hear this, say, I hear you. May God bless you. May he enable you. 
May he open your ears that your ears will be receptive to his directions and instructions. And may he grace you with the ability not only to hear it, but to walk in it so that you shall be a blessing and for all to give praise and glory unto the Lord. God richly, richly bless you. And wherever you are, I just want you to be on your feet and, and let us bless the name of the Lord. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Let us bless the name. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Open your mouth, somebody. And talk to God, 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 talk to God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. Oh Lord. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We say you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are. Therefore, you are worthy, oh Lord. I want you to lift your voice and begin to commit yourself unto the hands of the Lord. Beloved, I don't know whom this message is for, but if you are at the crossroads, you don't know what to do because the conditions are adverse. This is the time for you to believe the word of God. Walk in that word. Abide in him. Walk in that word. Walk in that word. Take that steps. Pray that his grace will be sufficient for you. Pray that doors of opportunity will open. Pray and let the enemy know you are unique. You are different. Zebra Banda Rabazu and the Bar. Jesus. We need a woman worthy. Oh. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, that which you put in my spirit, I've given unto your children. I pray that your hand and your mind shall be upon the sword. That you will enable them to meditate upon it day and night. That I will set them apart and grant them the boldness of a lion. Even as they venture into the unknown and do things that you have instructed us to do. Regardless of the pandemic era we find ourselves in. And as they obey you. If you did honor Isaac, then honor your word. You are an unchangeable changer. Your word is yes and amen. It is in times like this that, Lord, we see your miracles. Lay your miracle in their ministries, in their lives, in their families, in their job places, wherever they are. Manifest for all praise and glory to be given unto you. I thank you. I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And let the church say, Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And wherever you are, before uh, we share the grace, let us sing our fellowship song. I need you, you need me. Sub.
acabar I pray for you You pray for me I love you I need you to survive I won't harm you with words of my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Now lift your hands and let us share the grace together. The grace, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God richly, richly bless you. Amen.